All right, well, let's get started. Um, welcome everybody to Go Wellness Radio. I'm I'm stoked because we've got Melissa Hartwig here, and a lot of you know who she is. Um, she's our, our local Utah celebrity, but the uh, the author of Whole Thirty. Um, she's got a new book coming out, so we're going to talk about that today. Um, but Melissa, welcome. Thanks. Thank you so much for having me. It's fun to do something locally in my own community with people who you know are familiar with the Whole Thirty and using it with their patients. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of our patients will be watching this, and you guys know that 30-day kind of uh, that, that handout we've been giving you, the book, the construct. This is the woman to blame, not me. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll take the heat. I can handle it. Yeah, call her up. Her number is... <laughs> Um, so Melissa, I mean, tell us about your new book. I'm, I'm excited to see the next step, but maybe you could talk about your evolution, um, how you became you and where you're moving into the future. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So really short kind of summary. Um, I can't, my background is actually not super healthy. I have a background in drug addiction and I've been clean for 16 years, but right. when I got out of rehab from my addiction is when I first started looking into diet and nutrition and exercise. I really knew that I needed to change everything about my life mm -hmm. in order to maintain this kind of state of being clean and, and yeah. being healthy. So that's what got me into kind of fitness and health and nutrition. And the more I did in the fitness world with CrossFit and the RKC kettlebell certifications and some other various fitness certs, the more I realized that bringing nutrition into it was helping my clients get way better results and helping me get better results. Okay. So the whole 30 began in 2009 with this self experiment with this, like, let's do this 30 day, super squeaky clean eating protocol and see what happens. And this was you in Dallas. Is yeah. That my business okay. partner, Dallas at the yep. time, my co-founder. And it kind of started as a dare. He was like, you know, we were sitting around after a hard training session and he was like, we had just gone to a seminar by Rob Wolf, a good friend of ours. Oh, yeah. and, Paleo guy. Right. Yeah. Paleo. And Rob oh, yeah. was like, just do it for 30 days. And Dallas said, you know, we're sitting around after this training session. And he's like, what if we did this really squeaky clean thing? And I was eating Thin Mints at the time, straight out of the sleeve. Nothing wrong with that. Because I had just <laughs> trained and I yeah. deserved them. Right. Totally. This you was, earned it. Yeah. Right. This was my relationship with food. So I was like, sure. When do you want to start? And he said, mm -hmm. let's do it right now. And I put the Thin Mints down and we began. And wow. the next 30 days highlight, it was so profoundly life-changing for me because for me it highlighted this dysfunctional relationship with food that I had never previously identified all of the ways that I was now using food kind of like I used to use drugs to comfort to reward to mm -hmm. punish to self-soothe to distract yeah and in the absence of those comfort foods because of the whole 30 rules I had to find other ways to like cope and be healthy yeah and so it was so transformative that I was like, I need to talk about this. And I had a blog at the time with a decent following where I was talking about my fitness and my mm -hmm. own personal ventures. And I threw what we had done up on the blog. And that was July 2009. That was what was to become the very first Whole30. Okay, yeah. cool. So all your bloggers or, or your followers were like, man, I got to try this. Yeah. And, and they tried it. They had good success. Yeah. I mean, you look on the testimonials on your website and it's substantial. Yeah. Um, even, I mean, there's one lady who I remember, she lost 50 pounds in 30 days and it was like she hit day five and every, the wheels came off the bus. She's yeah. like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. I'm giving up. But she like, you know, she had enough inspiration from your followers that she was like, I'm going to keep on with it. And she, she, I mean, her body looked totally transformed. So. Yeah. And so much of it, it's really, so, you know, the whole 30 is not a weight loss program. I do. Yeah. But when you improve your digestion, get your hormones back in balance, reduce inflammation, like mm -hmm. so much of huge. that yep. it makes huge transformations in the way your body looks and obviously the way that you feel. And over the last seven years, you know, when you get one patient that comes in and you do this protocol and they get good results, you're like, awesome, that was cool. Yeah. When you get a hundred and then a thousand yeah, then you know you're and then something. ten thousand who report yeah. very consistently the same results, we were like, Oh, this is a thing. Like Some, something's working. Uh-huh. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's really how we grew and kind of developed the program over yeah. the years. Now, one of our mantras has always been, you know, I've had, you know, 50,000 people come through East West and, and mm -hmm. they always say, I want to lose weight. And I say, well, you're at the wrong place. We don't treat weight. We get you healthy yeah. and then your body will get, weight of, get rid of the weight naturally. And that's, that's one thing I admired about your work. You and Dallas are talking and Dallas is like, look, this is not a hazing. This is just an opportunity. It's yeah. like, we're not trying to make people feel bad about the food you're eating. We're just asking, try for 30 days, yeah. see how you feel. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, 
you can chase weight loss and lose the weight, but health doesn't naturally follow. I know a lot of people who do mm -hmm. a lot of unhealthy things in the name of weight loss. If you truly make yourself healthy from the inside out, if you're truly resetting your health, your habits, your relationship with food, yeah. the weight loss follows and it's sustainable. Mm -hmm. And it's not as flashy and it's not as sexy and it's not as like lose 20 pounds in 10 days, mm -hmm. but it actually works long term and people yeah. can maintain it. And yep. that's the most important part, right? That's it. Yeah. And it's, it's about lifestyle. It's about getting our bodies healthy, getting rid of inflammation is key. Now, one thing about Whole30 and about your new book that I'm intrigued by because psychological eating is huge. So much, I mean, yeah. For me personally, if I'm, if I'm in a writing phase, if I'm trying to produce my next manual, my next book, then what I'm thinking is... I get writer's block and I go to crackers. Mm -hmm. And so can you help me get rid of my cracker? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. We have, you know, the, what I talk about in Food Freedom Forever, the next book coming out in October, is that like food is not just food. Okay. Right? Food is comfort. Yeah. And it's a way to self-soothe and relieve anxiety and and it's a uh, reward and it's punishment and sometimes it's the only way we can communicate with the people in our lives and like show and receive love so food is not just food yeah. and for you it's not that there's something magical in a cracker that's like giving you the glucose yeah. or the micronutrients you like need it, though, Melissa. it does I mean, feel like it. i know i bite into that thing and i'm just like oh there it is yeah. but habit reward and like pleasure, those all of those loops in our brain are so closely related. And okay. now you have this loop where it's, you know, dopamine response is telling you that that cracker is going to be delicious and it's going to be uh -huh. rewarding and that's yeah. really hard to ignore. And the, you know, you take that first bite and because of the way the cracker is probably processed where I'm certain there's no complete protein and maybe it's, you know, it's a little bit of added salt and maybe a little bit of added fat. It's very rewarding. So you get that opiate response where sure. your body is like, Ooh, this does make me feel better. Uh -huh. And so that's a really strong association and it's like a learned and then it becomes habit. Yeah. And now you've got this cue. I have writer's block and this routine. I eat a cracker and the reward is what's the reward. Do you feel like you've taken a little bit of care for yourself. You've taken a little bit of time out and distracted yourself with something pleasant from the fact that you have writer's block. So the key uh -huh. is what can you put in the middle? The cue's not going to change. Okay. You're going to get yeah. writer's block. Yeah, totally. And yeah. you want the same reward. How can I feel like I've just given myself a little break and taken good care of myself during this point where I'm feeling slightly stressed about my work? What else can you put in the middle yeah. to get you from point A to point B without having to rely on something like a cracker. And it's not that the cracker is the worst food in the world. It's not like you're eating donuts. No, but it doesn't stop. It and doesn't then it's stop. like I go back and ride and then it's back to the crackers. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a distraction. So yeah. what's what can I put in the middle? I don't know. You tell me. What would make you feel like you were taking good care of yourself in that moment, giving yourself just a moment of like grace and patience while you're working through this writer's block? Could you go for a walk? Could you oh. phone a friend? Could you read a few pages of a book you find inspirational? Mm -hmm. Could you... I don't know, do some browsing online for something that you find really exciting or motivating, sure. camping gear or outside okay. gear. Like, what could you put in there that's not food related? Could you brew a cup of herbal tea yeah. where you've got this Absolutely. ritual involved where it's like, this mm -hmm. is now my writer's block ritual. I'm giving myself a break and permission to not think about the fact that I can't write right now. Yeah. And you're getting outside of that environment and you're satisfying without this feeling of like, I'm not totally in control of eating these crackers. Got it. Right. Okay. So, and any, everything you said, I mean, I could put in a, you know, sometimes I just set my phone two minutes, meditate. Yeah. Um, you know, or sometimes, yeah, I just go like I'm throwing the ball for my dog and, yeah. and it's, you know, just, it's, it's great advice. So, yeah. so this whole idea, the new book that you've written, whole 30, some of the criticisms are like, it's just not sustainable. It's not a practical way of living. Yeah. Um, you and I, we're kind of like, we're kind of the outliers in community. If you look at the way that we eat our lifestyle. Um, I don't think there's anything hard. I don't feel like I sacrifice anything. I eat before I go to family events, so I don't have to, um, you know, I can kind of like fill up a plate but not feel hungry to eat it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, one of the things that you've done is you've created the next step for people. They finish Whole30 and they're like, okay, I need a cool lifestyle program. So tell yeah. us a little bit about that. So the first thing I'll address is that the Whole30 is not meant to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. It is not the Whole365. It is not the way I'm telling people to eat for the rest of their life. Right. The Whole30 is a self-experiment. Mm -hmm. It's 30 days of figuring out how these foods work for you. Okay. And I'm not saying that these foods are bad. I'm just saying they're unknown. Yep. They're really commonly problematic to a very 
varying degree across a broad range of people and mm-hmm. I don't know how they're going to work for you and yep. neither do you until you go through the process of pulling them out putting them back in and comparing your experience seeing how you feel 30 days that's it yep. right so it's not prescriptive for a lifetime mm-hmm. however most people feel so much better at the end of their 30 days they feel like their cravings are under control their energy is better their mood is better their self-confidence is up digestion improves skin improves aches and pains like any number of things mm-hmm. And so they get done with the whole 30 and they think, I feel awesome. I look great. My energy is amazing. Like, I don't want to go back to the way I was eating. Yep. But it's really hard to sustain because you're talking about a 30-day intervention that can't possibly overwrite decades of less healthy habits and an emotional relationship with food. So the next book, Food Freedom, is all about how to take that short-term dietary intervention and actually turn it into a lifetime of healthy habits. How do you bring that forward with you and make it sustainable? Okay, so what are some? I mean, what, what are some changes? I mean, whole thirty. For those of you who don't know, some of the main foods. I mean, you, you got to get rid of the gluten. You got to get rid of dairy. Um, I mean, sugar is the biggest one that you talk about because it's the most addictive, and I'd agree a thousand percent. And so, um, kind of tell, walk me through the steps. So. You know, with the Whole30, you're eliminating foods for 30 days and then you're bringing them back in and you're comparing your experience. And what that will do if you follow the protocol, and it's extremely well outlined, we've got tons of free resources, tons of support. Mm -hmm. What that will do for you is help you figure out which foods are worth it for you going forward. So you reintroduce bread, it makes you feel terrible. Your skin breaks out, your digestion, you get really bloated and that like ache and pain in your shoulder comes back. Got it. Now you get to decide how often, how much, and when to include bread back into your life in a way that feels healthy and sustainable for you. Maybe you okay. love bread so much that you're like, it's worth it. I know how it's going to make me feel, but I love it. And once in a while it's worth it. And I'm like, cool, good for you. Yeah, totally. But now you're making an educated decision. So I could actually not get rid of crackers for the rest of my life. Yeah, if you maybe, don't want to. Maybe one day a week. Yeah, that's it's up. You get to decide. Cool. But okay. now you're I making like an educated decision about it. Not thinking, oh, the crackers are healthy because they're whole grain or... Right. Not thinking about it at all. You know exactly mm-hmm. how they're going to impact you. And like the goal is to make your diet as broad and varied as possible while still looking and feeling as awesome as you want to look and feel. Great. I so love it's, that. Right? Like almost like how much can you get away with? Yeah. And still have the results, the health and the fitness and the physical results that you want to have. Yeah. So one of the things about the Whole30 that makes it work so well is that the rules are very black and white. Right? Mm-hmm. It's very easy to follow. It's like yeah. there's no gray area. Not eat less sugar. It's if there's sugar in the ingredient list, it's out. Yep. But how do you apply black and white rules to something like food freedom where I can't tell you what's worth it for you? You mm-hmm. have to decide. So what I did is created this three-step plan. It's more designed to change how people think about this concept of diet, like from okay. the very beginning. So you're not thinking about it as if you've got a beginning and an end. Yep. It's just one step in a constant cycle that you are going to repeat for the rest of your life. Cool. And every time you go through it, it's going to get a little bit better and a little bit easier and a little bit more effortless. And you're going to dial it in more and more until it just becomes effortless. Like it just becomes the way that you eat. Okay. So step one. Step one is a reset. Like okay. the whole 30, you have to do a really intense dietary intervention mm-hmm. so that you can get your cravings, your metabolism, your digestion, and your hormones like back online the way that they're supposed to be running. Perfect. Okay. So you have to do a whole 30-ish reset. And and I've outlined in the book a vegan reset. I've outlined a craving reset, an anti-inflammatory reset, a few different protocols. Okay. But you got to get back to that place where like you've reset your taste buds, you've reset Mm -hmm. the, you know, your energy levels, like all of that is kind of working. You've got this good baseline. Okay. And then step two is enjoying your food freedom. You're applying the lessons you've learned during the reset. You're including crackers when when you want Mm -hmm. and in the quantity you want and you know how they're going to impact you and it's worth it and you're in control when you eat it and you make conscious, deliberate decisions and I give you a lot of strategies for doing that. Great. Okay. Step three is acknowledging when you're starting to slip. It's built right into the program because you will fall back into old habits. Okay. It's like a given. Yeah. It needs to come with like an accountability, a genie that pops out at step three because um, how do we hold ourselves accountable? We're so, it's so easy to, to take ourselves down the wrong path. Yeah. So I outline five really common triggers for people to fall back into old habits so that you can at least think about them ahead of time. And like there will be... You, you know, 
you know when you're like, eh, I should be thinking about this more, but I'm just not. Yeah, yeah. And I also talk about how staying really closely connected with your support community, your family, your friends, the online community who helped you with your reset yeah. can help you with that accountability piece. Okay. But if you take the like guilt and shame and the idea of failure out of it, you didn't okay. fail because you slipped back into old habits. Mm -hmm. It was that life happened, stress happened, vacation happened, holiday happened. And like, it's so common for those triggers to make us fall back into old habits. And it's not failure. It's just a valuable part of the process. It's a learning experience. Okay. And you have a plan to get back on track, which is just come back to your reset. Right? Awesome. So you That's go it. back to like a 30 day reset. 30, maybe it's only maybe seven, days, maybe, maybe it's 10. Yeah. It's okay. however long you need to feel like you are back in control and back at that really solid foundation. And then you repeat the cycle all over again and you just okay. keep doing that and yeah. you can do it forever. Brilliant. I right? love it. Yeah. 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 So this is practical. Any of you can do this. I mean, I can do it. I, this, I mean, I, I'm listening to this. I'm like, it's so nice that someone actually is taking the time to write this, so thank you. Because um, it, it actually is a very practical way of looking at it. I see myself doing it all the time. I go to Europe and I eat desserts nonstop. Sure. I come back here, I'm like, no dessert. You know, you get things really back dialed in, but that's like that step two where I'm like, you know, it's okay. I'm going to allow myself to really enjoy this experience. And many of my patients, they've heard me tell them, you know, they'll come in like it's confession and they'll be like, oh, right. you won't believe it. I, I ate bread and then I had dessert and I did the, and I'm like, did you enjoy it? And they're like, well, yeah. I'm like, good. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I, this is, yeah, it's brilliant because I think the most brilliance that we can find in anything healthcare related lifestyle is it's got to be practical mm -hmm. and it's got to be something where the person has control because you know, our mission is we want to help people take control of their health, their life, their diet, their food. And so what your, what your book, which comes out in October. October 4th, yeah. What it's going to give, give me as a practitioner is another tool where I can just say, hey guys, here's your next step. You've done the reset. In a lot of cases, we run labs. We figure out everything that's going wrong. Yeah. And so we'll say, hey, now here's your next step. And then it puts the control right back on them. Yeah. And I, there's so much like habit and psychology of change and willpower research built into the book. That's really my area of interest and area of focus. So this idea of making conscious, deliberate decisions around food, I give people a ton of black and white rules to follow around. Like you go to a party, you're faced with a cupcake, right? Yeah. I love cupcakes. So I yeah. use that example okay. a lot. Do I want to eat this cupcake? Here are all of the steps that you're going to go through in that moment to help you make a really good decision about is it worth it? Is it going to mess me up? Are the consequences going to be worth it in the end? Do I really want it in this moment? Yeah. Not just there's a rewarding food there and I'm just going to turn my brain off, but like, do I really want it? Yeah. And helping people kind of walk through step by step how to make that decision. Mm -hmm. It sounds cumbersome at first, yeah. but so does any new habit. You've got to really think about all of the different steps. Eventually, it just becomes effortless. I see the cupcake. I can run through all the steps in a moment, and I mm -hmm. either say yes or no thank you. Yeah. And it just becomes what you do. And so that's my goal is to help people realize, that, like, this is just how I eat, and I can do this forever. Cool. Yeah. So even if the cupcake's paleo, gluten-free, vegan. Sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Then if you still was... have to make a choice because yeah. what usually is at the foundation is still sugar. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So it's helping people really think about it from their own context and their own perspective and forcing people. People talk about mindful eating all the time, right? Yeah. But it's really hard to eat mindfully until you do this reset because your body's been lying to you for a long time. Mm -hmm. Your brain is screaming that you need sugar because your blood sugar is low yeah. or because you're insulin resistant right. or because your leptin balance is off or cortisol is off, right? Totally. You have been ignoring this voice in your head for years that says, I'm hungry because you've been on a diet. Yeah. So you don't know whether you're actually hungry or just having a craving. So once you do the reset, you'll be able to actually listen to the signals your body is sending you. And then I give you all of the ways to pay attention and listen. Great. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, where can people find out about your new book? So whole30.com, uh, okay. just the word whole and the number three zero and okay. our books are all there. Yep. Just like that. Whole 30 right here. Whole30.com. Yeah. We got the book. Everyone's got to read this, um, at least once in your life. And like I said, if you don't like some of the recommendations, we're going to give Melissa's phone number. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, 
That's great. And then your new book's coming out in October. October 4th, Food Freedom Forever. Yeah, we'll be doing. And we've got a big group poll 30 starting September 5th with a ton of support and extra resources, extra newsletters, Facebook Live posts. Like if you were thinking about doing a Whole30, September is the month to do it because the day the Whole30 ends, Food Freedom Forever comes out and you now have a plan to take what you cool. learned during the Whole30 and keep it going. All right, so let's get that out. Let's let our, our followers know and this will be fun. I'm gonna do it. So I think you should. Um, I'll let you know how it goes, how my crackers are doing. And well, now that you said that, I'm gonna be checking in with you. You know that, right? <laughs> I'll check in on the cupcakes, you check in on the crackers. Okay, sounds good. Okay, thanks Melissa. Thanks Appreciate for having you being me. here. Thanks. <laughs>